Hey everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101 where we give you fun new rock painting ideas that anybody can create. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get painting. Um, we are going to be doing this like monochromatic mountain type rock. Um, so there's some kind of fun technique to this that you can take and do a lot of different things with. Um, this is an example. We've done something similar to this in the past. It's kind of a washed out watercolor look to it and um, it makes a really pretty word rock. Um, this is something that you could write like explore or wonder or something along those lines on the bottom mountain. And Hello everybody that's joining. I got my iPad set in a weird spot. I feel like I can't really see the comments very good. So we're going to do some quick rearranging here while everybody's joining in. So we're going to do a teal set of mountains. Um, I did try with a yellow and you can see it on there. It's just very faded since the color itself is so light. It didn't work great. Um, you can still see it. Um, I'll still use it as a word rock, but it's not quite as um, a variation as if you're using a color that's a little bit darker. So I'm going to be doing teal. We'll see how that one works out. It's the same process no matter what color you decide to use, but I just like to show that not everything always works perfect for me either. So if you pick a color that doesn't work as great, that's okay. It's still pretty. You can still put words on it. So this is aqua. Craftsmart, that's just the house brand at Michael's, but any teal would probably be comparable. You don't need very much paint because we are gonna water this down. It's gonna be like a washed out look to it. And I have a second stone here that I'm going to be kind of playing around with to give us more of the word rock look. So if you think that the mountains are just a little bit too much or if you don't have a really steady hand and you don't like doing the straight lines, this is a second option of something that you can do. Now I do have my hair blow dryer handy and I am gonna use it a couple times during the video. I'll always warn you before I turn it on, I don't know how loud it will be um, for you guys when I do that, so um, I will warn you. So just water back here. This is a super cheap um, paintbrush. It doesn't even have the brand on it. It's probably out of like a kid's kit that my daughter got at some point in time. So just the important part is you want a square edge brush because then you'll be able to get the mountain peaks, like the corner there is what you need for the mountain peaks. So there we go. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of water to our little palette here. I'm just using a jar lid. They work great for little palettes. And then we're gonna pull our teal into that water. And we're just gonna get it really washed out, really watery, and then we're gonna do our first base coat here on our stone just to give it a kind of a teal undertone to all of it. And it's really light in color. When this dries, you're barely going to see it, but the pink lips may be a little darker. I can add a little more paint in there. We'll go a little bit darker. So there's, there we go. So go ahead and get that on there like that. And then on our back rock here, I'm going to do the same thing but I'm just not going to be specific about it. I'm just gonna create these kind of lines going across the stone, just like that, okay? Now I'm gonna move my palette. This is important. Move your palette somewhere so you don't just blast your paint if you're using a blow dryer. Now, if you're working on multiple rocks, you can kind of let these things dry on their own, but for the purpose of being live, so you're not here all day watching, literally watching paint dry, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to dry them. So, um, so here's your fair warning. I'm gonna be using the blow dryer. It's just one of the cheap, you know, hair blow dryers. I've had it for years. And look, it's my crafting one. It's all covered in paint and stuff. So, all right, three, two, one. Hopefully that wasn't obnoxiously loud. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna get our paint back up over here. So as you can see, this still has a little bit of wet to it, but that's okay, because we're gonna go to that one next. All right, so again, a little bit of water into our acrylic paint, pull a little bit more out of that blob in there. 
so that you get a little bit more. But when you're layering, you're gonna get the undertone as well. So we're gonna create our first row of mountains on here. So I like to kind of start at the peak of where I want my mountain to be and kind of pull down and away. And we might need just a smidge more of the, the teal in there. It's a little too thin. There we go. If you can't get an edge, that means you're just a little too thin, okay. Create your little mountain peaks. Try to do them at different heights. And then fill the rest of your stone with that teal. There we go. Just like that. Okay. And then back here on this second one, we're gonna swap spots here. We're gonna do the same thing, but as these layer, they're gonna create different texture. See how this one almost did a double layer on its own. We've done these before um, with uh, paint pens. You can do this with paint pens too. Just kind of have that go off the edge. Let's get a little more water in there. See if it goes over the edge. All right, just, we'll just let that dry, moving our paint out of the way again so that it doesn't dry out. All right, I'm coming in with that blow dryer again. Now, I will tell you on the second coat, or when, it, when you have edges of your mountains, I'm gonna turn my rock this way because I'm coming with my um, airflow in this direction. You don't wanna blow out the tops of your mountains. So if you can angle I'm not turning it on yet, but if you can angle this way as you're drawing, that way, if the paint moves at all, you're not losing that edge, that mountain edge that you created. So I'm turning on blow dryer again in three, two, one. So see how these, as they layer, you get these different lines and textures. It almost gives it like a marble look to it. And then we've got our mountain here. All right, so we'll get our paint back up here. We're going to get a little bit more water on our palette and then we're gonna pull in even more of that teal. Am I off the screen? I sure am. We're gonna pull in a little bit more of the teal there. And then we're gonna create our next layer. Now, when you're creating your layers, you don't want to cross the tops of these mountains with your layer um, until the very last one you can because you're gonna go in with the full color. But you'll see some of it will show through if, um, if you go, like if I took this color up in between these into this, lighter area you would see that edge underneath and then you'd kind of lose the effect you're going for so you can come real close to it but just don't cross over and again we're filling in all the way to the bottom and you don't have to follow the same lines i mean you can cut way down low and then have another one come way up high but you just don't want to go into the, the negative space that's left behind. Okay, so let that start to dry. You want to give your edges a little bit of time to set before you go in with your blow dryer as well. I mean, I'm not leaving a lot of time. Obviously, this is live. You can tell how much time I'm leaving. Uh, but you do want them to set just a little bit on that edge so that you get that outline. And we're going to go ahead and get some more water on here. And let's see here, let's fill in this little area. Let's kind of get some more teal in there. And you can do these, like this one up here, I have two different colors. Um, you can do them in different colors so they kind of layer and create different effects as well. And maybe I'll come back in here in a little bit and do another color. Let's see. Mm 
pink. All right, pink off to the side. And again, make sure you turn your mountains upside down. Um, sorry, I, I'm, I have not been peeking at questions. Um, hold tight on your questions till towards the end. I'll, I'll make sure I'm looking up. I did catch that one. I think Linda asked um, if you can do this on primed stones. It's not, yes, but you want to use um, a matte finish primer obviously um so when you get like if you do like a spray paint or if you prime them with white paint just make sure it's not a glossy surface so that your paint can kind of still soak in a little bit if that makes sense like chalk paint is really good for that as well um very loud truck going by okay i'm gonna blow dry again so three two one Okay, see how cool this is starting to look? I might leave this one just its own color so it's a monochromatic look itself. That one's looking really cool too. All right, so you have to decide as well how many layers of mountains are you trying to make? Uh, as your color starts to get darker and darker, you'll make that decision. I think I'm only gonna do one more because I do like, this one kind of got a little low on me. I wanna make sure that I'm leaving enough space to add a cool phrase. Uh, to the stone itself. So where's my paint? Back over here. So I am gonna just kind of wipe my brush back here on my paper just to get more of the moisture out of it. And then I'm gonna go in on the back side here where I'm, I'm mostly just the plain acrylic paint here. So the main mountains in the front, we are going to go ahead and do with our solid color, whatever color we had decided on. And these you can cross um, where your lines are because you're gonna be able to do a second coat on it and get a nice true color to it. So if you're going along here and you cut in to that part, you're okay. So I'm gonna cut in there and pull down in a way. I might have to get a little bit more paint here. I'm a stickler. I only get out as much paint as I think I'm going to use. I hate wasting paint. <laughs> Oop, see, tiniest little dot there. <laughs> we're going to go right into that full body paint. And we're going to fill in our mountain. And on this front one, I'm going to be extra careful. I want those lines nice and sharp and crisp. And you can do a second coat on this as well if you need to, so that it's not translucent at all. So let's do another little one right here. Pull down in a way. I have to go into my paint one more time. We'll do one more high one here. I have to get just a smidge more paint. I'll let this dry a little bit, but I can still see through in a couple spots. So we'll let that get a little dryness on it. But you can see the gist of it. I mean, you can see the layers going on there. Aren't those pretty? I just, I love the fact that they're just like that one color as well. The monotone look to it is really neat. All right, I'm gonna get one more drip of paint here. Let this dry a touch. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. I've been using the blow dryer the whole time. Why not give it one more little shot here? All right, blow drying in three, two, one. Okay. 
And this guy, I think I'm just gonna leave how it is. I think this one looks good. I'm not even gonna do a second coat color to that. If you were, you just do the exact same thing. That's what I did here. I went with yellow because I had some yellow left over from doing my yellow mountains there. But see, you can see through these in a few places and I don't really care for that. So I'm gonna go right back in with my teal and I'm gonna give that a second coat so that these top mountains are just nice, solid color. For my lettering. All right, and you can go down the front side here. I'll probably go and frame by doing all the edges in a teal to finish it off. I'm just gonna do the bottom right now because I have a little bit more paint left. I don't want that to dry up while I'm finishing up here. So we're just gonna fill this in a little bit. Just along the base here. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. Okay. All right. So there's our mountains. I'm bring it up nice and close here. Isn't that pretty? And you could do it with blues. I think this would look really cool with like an indigo purple color. Something that's a little really bluish kind of purple would be really pretty. Um, again, you want to have a color that has a darker hue to it because as you stack, I'll show again for people that are joining in a little bit later, the yellow, while you can see the, the mountains in there, it really doesn't create that same effect because your front color isn't quite dark enough to pop off of the translucent colors. So again, the pinks look really pretty. And I really like how this teal finished off. I think this is dry enough um, that we could probably, maybe I'll write on the pink one to finish up here. Let's see, I wanna maybe do, I like the idea of having the phrase explore on this, cause that, you know, to the mountains, to, I love to go to the mountains and just explore, you go walking and just find new things. So. I've got, I've shown this before. I didn't leave the shop, the Amazon shop in the description today, but I can come back and leave it in the comments after. So this is the Uniball Signo UM153. It's like a gel pen. It's a gel roller style white. And it works really good for lettering because it's pretty thin and you can uh, go right on top of the paint really well. So one of the things I like to do is I always, if I'm not sure about how something's gonna fit or the lettering that I'm gonna do 100%, I will write it out. I'm getting this water out of the way before I accidentally knock it into my iPad or something. Um, but that way you have an idea of how it's gonna fit or you can make adjustments. So I'm just gonna line this up with one of these. I have to do it on top of paint because it won't show on the paper. But I'm thinking all capital letters. So let's see here, just X. Just making sure my normal lettering, I'm not gonna end up too big. Just explore, right? Maybe I'll put a dot in between each E, X, B. Okay, and then also something else I do when I do this. All right, so now, when you, did I spell that right? <laughs> explore, yes, L-O-R-E, okay. Um, a, it's good for spell checking, and B, now I can look um, here and see, okay, the L is my middle letter. So if I put that on first towards the middle of my rock, then I can build my word out and it kind of helps me center my writing. So I think I'm gonna do a dot in between each because I love dots, you guys know that. Okay, 
so old. I'm just doing regular old wintering. Now the thing when you're using these gel rollers is move slowly because it is a gel roller. You gotta get the paint on the back end as it's rolling along, okay? And don't press too hard. Every once in a while, if it's not rolling, just kind of keep going back and forth until it starts coming out. Uh-oh, I got a little divot on my rock. I didn't account for that. We're gonna make it work. But I'm gonna have to go onto this wreckage part of my rock. Bummer. Really lightly, I'm going really lightly to get that E down there. I didn't uh, plan that very good. Wasn't paying attention to the bumpiness of my rock over there. But we got it, it's on there. Explore. Mm. <laughs> Do a little dot on either side, even though this is rough. There we go. I'm gonna touch up a couple of these letters now that they're down. But that's it on the stone for today, guys. So I'm gonna kind of go through here and just touch these up a bit, thicken them up just a little bit all the way across so that they're cohesive. And give me just a second if you've got any questions. I know I, I I spotted the one. I don't know if, if I missed any. I, I always come back through the comments section anyways. So even if I answer it live, I usually answer it in the comments just in case somebody else sees the question and has the same one that you can just click and get the answer. Um, but again, I'll come back and leave our Amazon shop link in the comments as soon as this uploads uh, because every time I use this pen, people ask. So I should have had it up there. I kind of wasn't planning on writing on the rock live, but you know. All right. Explore. I hope you guys all have a fabulous weekend. <laughs> um, and thank you for everybody that joined in live. And thank you for all the comments and the hearts and the shares and all that stuff. I really appreciate it. it helps the page grow. Helps others find these easy tutorials so they dive in and start painting. I know the rock painting groups are filled with people who found a rock but are nervous to paint. So that's why I like to share these into rock painting groups as well. The local ones so that people can say, oh, I can do that. And you only need, what, one bottle of paint. You don't have to even put words on it. You could hide it just like that. That's gorgeous too. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend. Thanks all of you for joining in. I will be back soon with something else fun and new for you guys to try out. Bye-bye.